I got 15. <laughs> Hey kids, welcome to Styles Rebel. I don't actually have 15 yet. <laughs> I have a trial of 15 because my employer is not rolling over to 15 until the beginning of the next season of the show I'm working on. So they're not in a big hurry to start rolling out licenses, but I have been harassing people and I have assurances I'll get it soon. I'm, I'm working on it, but the trial is good. I got this. I'm playing with stuff and I'm so happy. There's so many things I'm excited about. I think I'm just going to assault you quickly with some of the stuff that I've been playing with. I got blue in here. When I pulled in blue, everything worked perfect. My deformers worked perfectly. We got some little sneaky stuff in here. Look at this. Oh, he's so sneaky. I love it. Where do I even start? Okay, so I've got my little happy face here and I've got a stick. So let's just start with the cute new cutter system because it's so cute. I've got my happy face cone head. I can just sneak my little dude in here and now it's masking it. What? So now my stick is acting as a little mask. And you can invert it if you open this up and you go into your drawing tab. You can invert it. So it's a little bit counterintuitive. It, it's backwards from the cutter. So right now it's not inverted and this is acting as a spyglass. And when I do invert it, then it's acting like a normal cutter would. That's very Tomb Boom to do two things using the exact same terms in the opposite way. But it's, I mean, you can look at it and figure it out pretty quickly. So that's cool. That saves having to pull in cutters because I don't even know how many cutters I'll use. I mean, blue has probably 25 cutters in there. Like, I mean, there's three in this cluster, this eye cluster. There's, there's more over on this one. Like, oh, look at all these little, you can see all the little masks here, these little black and white masks. Every time you see that, that's where a cutter is. So that's eliminating so many modules. It's going to clean the network up real good. I'm super excited about that. That, that alone is super cool. Next most exciting thing I think is their color system. They've finally done something. <laughs> They've finally done something <laughs> about the colors. So if you have a baby designer who comes in and colors everything with one palette, all 15 characters or something, you actually have something that could save you from getting completely stressed out. They show a little demo of it and it is really quickly intuitive. Here I have the shirt color. We'll say we have that colored with the wrong one, you can just right click that color well and then come down here and recolor drawings. It's, it's really that simple. It's either the current drawing that you have selected, all drawings in the selected layers, or all drawings in the scene. So if you have a whole scene that they messed up, a character like Blue that has a full 360 rotation, lots of little shoulder bits and stuff that we used to have to recolor piece by piece. Now you can just select the new color, hit OK, and it recolors everything. <laughs> I'm so happy. <laughs> I was talking to the designers that I work with about this feature and how it could go so horribly wrong, but it really is super intuitive and it's no hassle and it's fast. Shh, that alone makes 15 the far superior. Um, you can remove and delete on disk now. So I'm thinking that actually means like remove for realsies. Is that what that means? I'm gonna have to research that more. I haven't touched that yet. I haven't gotten into pencil texture because it's not a thing I'm super into. I will have to get into that later, but it's not really high priority. All right, the next thing I'm gonna go over a little bit is some of these constraints because this is really what I think everybody's the most excited for is these new constraint modules. So there's a few of them that are pretty super easy to figure out. And I mean, you could start building with them pretty quickly and figure out how they work but it's combining them into different ways that is really going to start blowing people's minds and make this program just so much more powerful than any other 2d program out there so the two point constraint super good i'm just going to use this little stick i'm going to plug the two point constraint in there it just unplugged this guy so that's not a big deal it's gone back i'm just going to take all the animation off this so this is its default position now what i can do in these two ports is add two pegs one in each one. This first one is for a switch. And remember, if you zoom in and you select these little boxes, it's going to tell you what they are for. So this is for a switch. That's going to be this constraint switch here, which is advanced. We're not going to get into that tonight. I just need to geek out real quick because I have some crazy stuff on the go. So I can't spend a million years in here, but there's going to be a lot of 15 stuff coming up in my next few videos. It's going to be all about 15. So what I'm doing is just just like you normally would set up your peg pivots for these pegs so that's these guys in here you can go check out my peg pivot video if you're unfamiliar with this kind of stuff but i feel like if you've gotten this far with me you know you know this stuff you're advanced so now we can grab this peg 
for this peg. And we can just animate one side of this little string, you guys. So it's like a deformer without needing a deformer, but it gets really good. It gets, it gets really good. Let's just get rid of the string. Oh, I'm, my brain is going faster than my hand. So, so you want to make sure that your peg is right here on the edge if you, but you, you'll figure it out pretty quickly for yourself. So now I've got this little creature here. <laughs> I mean, this is already a, a character. I, you can just animate this guy, put some little mouths, little, like, I, I can't, I can't even handle this stuff. It's so good. It's so much better than morphing. It's so much better than the deformer. Just, just, this is just the two point constraint. The, the multi-point constraints, I can definitely see how they're, they're going to be super useful. But this, I, to me, is like super winner. I love the two point constraint. There are some big intimidating check, like boxes that come along with these. But once you sit down and you read the tool tips, they start to make a lot of sense pretty quickly. Active, this is kind of neat. You can turn down how strong this is. So if I put this down to 50, now you're, it's going to say that this peg is only going to take half of the movement. So if this was a little character, you could turn this down like that, and then you'd have more fine control over exactly how much he's bouncing. So that could be useful. I think most of the time you're going to keep that up at 100, because then you're getting a one-to-one -one movement on your peg and your little dancing ball. It's so good. I just, I just want to animate a blob character now. This is just making my day. All right. Volume max. This this is actually going to control the squash and stretch of this guy. So now if I put it down to 100, see how this one won't go nearly as wide. It won't stretch out at 100, 400. It's really going to be able to stretch so that like, if you know, whatever you, you want to keep your stuff more tight, you don't want to squash and stretch too far. Then 200 kind of seems that's the default. That seems to be where you want to go. So you're going to get a little bit of squash out or maybe even 150, 100 seems to not have any. So you can see it's maintaining its width. It's, it's not squashing out at all. So I feel like for the most part, um, maybe somewhere between 100 and 200 is going to feel good. But I mean, just play with it. Feel, see what feels good. The volume minimum. So th this is actually the volume of the item that you're squashing and stretching. So now you're saying it can't go below 45% of its volume. That's pretty cool. Distance max. That's saying how much you can actually get out of it. So it's putting constraints on it. Skew modifier. This is going to prevent it from rotating. If you turn this up to 100, you can see that it's skewing and stretching around and then if it's at zero which is the default then it's going to rotate around so personally i think this being a little higher would work a little better if you're going to animate a little ball character or i mean you could set up a little flower sack so easily with this oh so much smoothing is a cushion so if you're animating something like this it's actually going to smooth out the action from what i've read i haven't played too much with the smoothing the point balance, it claims to affect how much its movement happens between the two points, but I really haven't seen a difference just switching back and forth between 0 and 100. If I switch that to 100, it seems to work very similarly to if I undo that. Like, see, you can't see the difference. I just undid it and just moved it around a little bit. So point balance, maybe that's something you need something else to see a big difference in. But for the most part, we're just looking at like active. So you can turn that down and have it a little bit less reactive. The volume modifier and the volume max minimum, stuff like that. That's going to be really fun. And the skew modifier, I really think it helps to have that up at 100 if you're trying to keep this thing grounded in one spot without doing weird rotations. This on zero is really giving you some strange loop de zoops but whatever you needed to do, pay attention to that. Flatten type. So all of these different constraint modules seems to use this type of a display for putting stuff out. And this is similar to the way that your composite is using like a bitmap versus a pass through. So if you're mucking around with this, it's going to affect whether it's going to move in 3D in different ways or how it's displayed in 3D. I'm not 100% ready to give definitive descriptions of each of those yet, but this is about how things are displayed Z-axis wise.
guys. Uh, and these bottom things I haven't gone through yet. So over the next little while, I'm going to explore the guts out of these so I can give complete information on all of it. And I've got some friends who are master riggers in their own right who I'm going to get more information off of. So stay tuned for more. The next great one is this Transform Limit. This is the one that I'm really excited for. <laughs> They're all, I said that like four times. So these three are the ones that I was really looking forward to. The transform limit is a way of telling it to not listen to things above it. So here blue is kind of exploding. Let me show you why. Boop, I got two of those. The thing about this transform limit that I'm looking forward to is that you can limit rotation specifically. So here if I grab blue and I just rotate him around, his arms are gonna follow the body, which totally makes sense. By using this transform limit, what I can do is tell it to limit the rotation specifically. You can also have it do the translation scale. So all the different things can be affected. Rotation has the most obvious uses that I could come up with, but I'm going to I'm going to play around with it and think about where it'd be good to do these other ones. Active value means any of these here that you have information on is going to be affected, but because I've turned on rotation, this is the only one that matters. And I'm going to just tell it that it's 0% active. This active up here is whether the switch itself, like the transformation limit module is working. So you could turn this off if you need to by setting this to 0. Everything is the zero to 100, which is a little different from their zero to one that they've been working with, but you know, that's that's harmony. They like to do this stuff. Setting this to zero, and I've, I've played around in here, so there's some setting change. The, the biggest thing is that you want your pivot point here to match the pivot point of the thing that you are playing around with. So in this case, it's this arm. I'm going to say, don't rotate with the body. So I grabbed the pivot point here and pasted it in here. I don't have a script for that, but I've been looking for one. I'm on the hunt. If you guys have a paste pivot script, you let me know. So I'm going to squeak this in here, this transform limit. And now when I rotate the body, the arm doesn't rotate. What? So this is great for so many things, tassels on your hat, big hair wigs, any dangly thing. If your character has little hoodie strings, you can just put this on it and now automatically it's going to react with gravity for no money. It's just a free module. You just say rotate no, set the pivot point and you're all done. And this, you can move it around and you can animate it. All this stuff works underneath here. It's just this one says stop rotating <laughs> with anything above it. Now, the thing is though, let's say you're using your master peg here to set your character up and you don't want your transform limit to be affected by that there. Cause you're setting it up, say the ground plane is just this way. So you need gravity to be this way. Uh, you just have a camera tilt or something like that. So now this is going to have to be counter animated here. But the thing is, they thought of that in here. Below all these, you can allow flipping. Yeah, I want that. Uniform scale. That doesn't sound useful at this time. So that I think would just ignore parent scaling. Somehow different than this. More research necessary. So we want to ignore parents. And let's say we want to ignore the master peg. What we're going to do is come up. It's called blue master peg. I'm just going to copy this. And I'm going to paste it here where the parent name is. Now, initially, it's not going to do it because it's ig not ignoring any parents. Right now, we have to go up one. And then I'm not sure if they count each one of these as a two three going up the, but we'll pretend that there's two more parents in here if they're counting to formers. Not sure if they do. And there's three and there's four. So it'd have to go up at least four parents, but you can, I mean, you can just slam it up like that. 12 is fine. 12 work. Yeah. So it just has to be any number of parents that gets you as high as that one, but anything below the name you put in there isn't going to work. So this guy up here is going to work. If we have our chest deformer on, we use the rotate on our deformer. It's not going to do there either. This is so great. So now if I'm having him bend over to pick something up, I don't have to counter animate that arm. This is amazing. These are also pasteable. So I can just come over here and paste. I don't need to paste special or anything. And the only thing is I have to update the drawing pivot here. Boop, 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 boop. And now it's got the appropriate drawing pivot. And now both the arms are going to work in the exact same way. It's already been set up using the master peg as its limit of parents. Amazing. Oh, I think I messed up that pivot point. Whoa. <laughs> Let's make sure that's working. Wow. <laughs> 
how ridiculous is this? It's, God, how lazy are they allowing us to get at all? Let's just throw them on his legs for, for fun. The only downside is that I don't have a paste any way to easily copy and paste over these pivot points. So each one has to be manually copied and pasted out of your pivot information in your layer. But I mean, that's a small price to pay you guys. It's not so bad. <laughs> And once you have your character set up, I mean, it's a breeze after that. It's just the initial setup. It's a little bit. Do this. I don't think it's going to work as good with the legs. <laughs> I didn't think this through. I'm going to just hook up the lower legs to my <laughs> kinematic output. That doesn't make any sense, you're saying. I'm drunk with power. <laughs> <laughs> this is everything. <laughs> Wow. Can't handle how much fun this is. And this makes no sense. <laughs> so that's just a few of these things. Like, <laughs> I just crashed my little computer. No, it's hanging in there. Poor old Blue is devastated beyond any sort of... <laughs> Polly shouldn't be. Okay, so this is just the tip of the iceberg. I'm going to go through all this stuff. I'm doing a lot of reading. The master controller, you're going to have to give me a couple of months for that one because that's got scripting and I'm, I'm not I'm not a programmer. I'm going to have to phone a friend on that one. I have a few friends that are, like I said, they're full-time riggers. I'm kind of a retired rigger. I still do a little bit on the side, but it's not my main deal. So I'm going to see if I can get them on an interview soon and talk to them about how this has really affected their workflow and see what their favorite stuff is because I'm out. I'm, I'm just... I can't can't even put into words how exciting this is. This is such a massive upgrade. This is such a massive upgrade. I don't know. And the fact that Blue just popped right in here and worked. I'm going to check some of the other bigger rigs that I have from some of the shows I've been working on and see how well they work. But so far, everything has come in super easily and I haven't had any problems. And I'm just, I'm so excited to, to get into this stuff. Today, we looked at our transform limit, which is how we're getting this rotation stuff happening. We just took a little peek at our mats, how we could just sneak in and use this stuff as a mat now. That's crazy. And then to invert your mat, it's here in your drawing tab. Don't forget that. That's super convenient. And then we set up our little two-point constraint, which takes really no time. It's so much fun, you guys. And you can just pop a peg on, pop a peg right here, and it just moves around. You could also just select both, and it moves around. It's so magical. Oh, and you can combine them. So here we have our transform limit. Okay, we're going to... Boop, 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 boop. So in here we have our switch because remember just select and it'll tell you force transform. So this is going to say do what I say, do it. And this one's limited transform. So if you want something limited, you have to put it in this guy. You can't put it in this middle guy. He he's different. So if you, for example, put this in here, this guy's going to just do what you think he's going to do. He's not going to have any problems. But if you do this. And then you turn off some of these active values. So let's say your X translation, we're just going to set that to zero. I almost forgot the most important thing. This transform limit has a pivot point. Shift F11 or view show control shift F11. You're going to find its pivot point and you can say, okay, your pivot point is here, right in the same. And you can, you can paste it in. So you're saying, this is where my peg pivot is, is here. I want this to be exactly where my peg pivot is, right? So now it's exactly here. We could set all our pegs to the exact same spot. So now I can say, all of this is trapped. Don't use any of this X, Y, Z. You're totally stuck there. That point is stuck because you've told this constraint, don't move. But when I animate this guy, the rest of it's it's fine because it's just, it's just choosing one constraint and moving. Think of the possibilities. This is like you get gum on your shoe. You now you could just you could just set up your gum like this, no problem. You animate it, you're on your way. It's better than a deformer. You could strain deformers. I wish I had 70 hours to go over this right now, but this week has been just a total train wreck. I have to get on a plane Thursday night, so I'm trying to like rush through some stuff, get a couple videos put together so I can have some lined up for Wednesday, Sunday. I don't know when I'm coming back. My life's just a train wreck right now. But this is just so exciting. So I had to get into this. So transform limit, point constraint, two point constraint. Oh, we haven't gotten dynamic string yet. That is that is just confusing to get enemy. But the, just these few here, these couples, we went into color stuff a little bit. That's super exciting. So far, everything I hoped is happening in my life. 
So like, share, subscribe, all those things internet people ask you to do. And I'll see you in the next video, maybe with more 15 stuff. That's a possibility, but who knows? I don't have a plan. I can't even get my own life under control right now. So, bye!